يا ايها الذين امنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن وله أما بعد أهلا وسهلا ومرحبا Welcome to day number 18 and this is part number 2 of Zakah and yesterday alhamdulillah we spoke about the 8 categories of those that can be given Zakah the third category they are those who are employed to collect or administer the funds of zakah so they are appointed by the authorities and in a muslim country for example the government they collect zakah so they have certain people that works for them and they will be involved in the collection of zakah and the distribution of zakah so they are one of those people that can get from the zakah they can be paid from the zakah and allah knows best the fourth category they are those who to يعني, attract the hearts of the people or those who have been inclined towards Islam. They are people who may be given zakah in order to open up their hearts in Islam. Whether it is a disbeliever or someone who has just become Muslim, so we can say a new Muslim, or for example a Muslim but his Iman is extremely weak and his faith is extremely weak and he's evil but maybe when we give zakah to him it will ward off this evil and he will become a better Muslim so this category is for those people that we can attract their hearts back to Islam or a non-Muslim that shows great interest in Islam and we will give them a type of gift from the zakah The fifth category, they are those who are entitled to zakah, which is slaves. However, we don't have slaves in our time today, so we are not going to go into too much detail with that. The sixth category, they are those who are in debt. The scholars divided debt into two categories. Debts incurred to bring re about reconciliation and debts incurred because of need. With regards to debts incurred due to bring about reconciliation, they give an example of a case where there is a dispute or a conflict or war between two tribes. A man of goodwill standing and honor comes and reconciles between these two tribes incurring expenses for which he takes responsibility. So we should give this man money from the zakah in appreciation for his great effort which he has put an end to the enmity and hostility between these people. He should be given zakah regardless whether he is rich or poor because now he has done something which serves as a common interest to the community. The second category of debtors is the one who is in debt on his own account so he took a loan from someone either to meet his own needs and he did not have money his debt may be paid off from the zakah funds so long as he does not have any wealth that could be used to pay off the debt and many of the ulama they also explain in this category the person who is eligible for zakah because he has debt is that he himself has not reached the nisab so someone can't say, you know, I have a bond, so I'm in debt, so now I can get someone else's zakah to pay off my bond. No, because this debt is something that it happens monthly and you are able to pay it off monthly and Allah knows best. The seventh category, fi sabilillah, and this is with regards to jihad. So the soldiers, the mujahidun, they are fighting in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are eligible for zakah in our times today many of the ulama they have said and they basically speak about fi sabilillah 
And they have said that this now includes seeking Islamic knowledge or someone that is involved in da'wah and in serving the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, defending Islam, not just by silah, not just by weaponry, not just by a sword, etc., but also defending Islam by virtue of a pen. So he writes against the enemies of Islam. He defends the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, etc. So he also falls, or she, they fall under the category of fi sabilillah, and Allah knows best. The eighth category is the wayfarer. This is someone who travels. So someone is on travel, and they are cut off from everything, and they have no money. Such a traveler may be given enough zakah to enable him to reach his homeland, even if this person is well off, he's rich, but he traveled to another country, his wallet got stolen, he doesn't have access to his bank accounts, he doesn't have a single cent, he cannot move from point A to point B, so someone comes to him, they can give him zakah. And what happens? So, he will be given the zakah just enough for him to travel home so that he can get back to his homeland and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. However, the person does not have to, if it's a rich person for example, he does not have to pay the money back and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. If he decides to take this as a debt, as a loan, then this is different and he will have to pay it back. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. So this basically brings us to the end of zakah. Obviously there is so many other masail that can be discussed. There is just one point I would like to end up with and this is that zakah must be given in a money form. So I cannot make a food parcel with zakah money and give it to the poor. However, if the scholars of a particular place, if they come together, the ulama, and they decide that there is a need that certain a certain country, because there is famine, because there is drought, etc., and the people they cannot go out to buy food and the money that they will be given from the zakah will not be able to assist them in their needs then these ulama they can come together and they can pass a fatwa to say that because of the need of the people people can take their zakah money and they can buy food or clothing etc and give it to this group of people or this country however this is only done by a group of scholars if there is a need, but the default is that zakah needs to be given to the recipient in cash and Allah knows best. Inshallah tomorrow, day number 19, we will look at zakatul fitr. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون